guys, welcome to today's Gypsy Jazz tune. It's actually a Gypsy Waltz written by Stefan Rembel for the film Midnight in Paris. It's called Bistro Fada, beautiful E minor key song, full of great ideas, phrases, and licks. I'm gonna teach it to you note by note, rhythm by rhythm, phrase by phrase, completely breaking it down so that you learn it really well. Let's get started. Is this. So this is kind of an experiment, kind of like the old school way I mentioned of teaching, like, you know, put your finger there, even though I can't point exactly, but just copy me type of a thing. Uh, there's actually a great video I was watching fairly recently. I think it was uh, Dorado Schmidt teaching his son guitar many years ago. And they, you know, there was like copy me. It's just the, the oral tradition of learning. And I think again, that's a very important part. I'm gonna do that with you guys the copy of me approach uh, versus just rambling concepts or anything like that. But you have to definitely keep trying it. I know it's, you know, not necessarily one-on-one, -on -one, but at least it's, it's, it's good that I could keep repeating and you can copy me, et cetera, and ask questions. And, you know, anyways, that's kind of the method I'm trying to use with this approach. I did tab it all out for you, the A section, which is what I want to go over today. There's basically three sections, and we're going to basically treat it like it's, uh, you know, it's, each section is its own composition. Um, kind of talking again about some techniques, some of the theory behind it so that you learn it and can memorize it um, instead of just kind of again reading it. From, I want you to kind of just internalize it. That's definitely the goal here with this. It's kind of an experiment again. I, I haven't, I, I'll teach this way when I'm teaching private students. It's actually a really good method, of course, as I just mentioned, like the oral tradition, but it's harder with a group of people but that's why you really gotta make sure that you try it, uh, meaning play it with me here. If you watch uh, Stefan Rembel play it live on any videos, you'll notice that he doesn't play it the same way twice usually. <laughs> He's always kind of improvising around it. So that's why specifically we'll just use the recording from the Midnight in Paris soundtrack. I think that's the easiest way to just keep track of it and not a live version or anything like that where he's uh, changing things around. Even then, he, there's variation within the A section on the second time through, so, but we'll look at that again, but today we'll just hit that first A section. So, first of all, it's just the intro. We're gonna just break it down chord by chord. And the intro is this, E minor. And I'm just playing this open E minor. I'm gonna again walk through it very, very slowly. We have this open E minor. Okay, so for now, I do not recommend this E minor. Okay, if you're just to look at the chord, um, we could do that later, we could be creative, but for now we'll use just the open E minor. So we're going one, two, three. Okay, boom, chuck, chuck is usually what, what people refer that to. And then immediately you wanna get the third in the bass, the G in the bass. Okay, so you're gonna go one, two, three, one, two, three. And you're not, you don't need to strum all six strings. That's way too much. You just want to isolate and pretty much hit, as I had written on the paper there, four, three, and the two strings. Okay, you don't need to be very precise, but I mean, pretty precise again, but you don't need to like look down and make sure that you're hitting it. Okay, and there I heard the B string. And that's okay, it's all still part of the chord. So again, we have one, two, three, one, two, and I'm using my pinky, I'm, again, I'm gonna really break this down for you. I'm using my pinky and I'm holding this E minor like this, but hey, try it like this. Okay, like this. This is often how I would play E minor. Okay, and then you could do the fill. Well, actually, sorry, we're, we're gonna go to F sharp minor seven flat five. If you don't know F sharp minor seven flat five, let's go through that very slowly. We have, okay, F sharp. Well, I don't know if I should say the notes or the numbers. Two, 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 one. It's an A minor triad with the F sharp in the bass. And that's the two chord. And then instead of going to the five chord, which is B7, we're gonna just play a riff. like 
this. If you guys, if you guys all have the tabs with you, the sheet music that I passed out, just for reference. Again, I, I'm gonna go through it over and over. I'm really experimenting here. I'm gonna go through it over and over so that you memorize it. You do not, you will not need it. I might need it too, though, for a second. But <laughs> just, but we have this. Of course, we could just loop that, which is what we're going to do. Three, one, two, three. One and two and three and one, two, three. So this is why actually I, do, I, I like playing the E minor like this, because it makes it easier to go to the F sharp minor seven flat five like this. So that's why I'm starting with E minor like this versus this. So using these fingers and then I'm using my pinky to grab that G bass and then here okay and then the riff I'm using my middle finger riff. I'm using my middle finger and I actually want to do that with you guys a few times we want to swing it we want to play it slow at first we want to swing it so we want to do this. Two, three. One, two, three. Two, three. And I'm just alternating my picking. exercise and move it all around it's a really good valuable skill to do that okay okay so now we got to get that pickup note it's crucial that we practice this int the entry to the melody and it starts on the and of one one okay and then I'm gonna play it very slowly one and notice that I'm shifting to my first finger here that's just my own preference. You might use your pinky, one. And then you can shift, <laughs> uh, depending on what your, what your strong fingers are. For me, these thing, one and three are the strongest, even though I'll, I'll use my pinky sometimes for a slur, like this. But I much prefer this. Most players do. So again, I'll talk about that phrase in a second, but let's just get the timing of the um, the pickup measure into the melody. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three, one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, one. Ba doo ba doo ba dum. So one, two, three, one. One, two, three, one. And I have to tell you that's the E melodic minor scale. If you want, I, that's how I think of it. Beatles use it on yesterday like that. You have a B7. And that kind of helps me know by knowing that. One, two, three, one. One, two, three, one. I did a I did this on the end of one, I did an upstroke. So I went one. One 
do at this tempo, you can do all downstrokes. One. And that's fine too. I'm gonna have you do what works best for you as far as picking is concerned. Please try it out though, okay? Here we go. Now we're now we arrived here on measure one. Well, measure nine, really, of the sheet music, but measure one, I call it measure one of the A section, minus the intro, which is an E minor chord. Don't worry, the chords are pretty easy. We, we'll come back and play chords, but let's just do this first. Okay, so now we have this one, two. One, two, and a three. One, two. Okay, we have this slur, this pull off, and then a slide down to the four. That's why I like this. You could just use these fingers, but I find it stronger to go. And even with the timing, I'm going, I'm doing that as an upstroke. So I end on beat one on the F sharp here with the downstroke. One, two. Okay, so it's one, two. flat, which is the lower neighbor tone of B, which is on the E minor chord, the fifth. Okay, a lot of this half step embellishment. Very, very pretty. So, one, two. Okay, let's get that much. One, two, right on the G. Imagine we already did those pickup notes. Don't worry, we'll put that back in. One, two, three. Okay. And I could get out the talking metronome. I probably will go that far with this because this to me, with you guys here, is like a glorified practice session. That's how I'm treating it. Like we're all practicing this together to get it down. Okay. So I. Don't be surprised if you hear if I you hear the guy go one, two, three, one, two, three. It's hard to do count and do all those little licks at the same time. So it's nice to have somebody just designating the time for you. One, two, three. And I'm kind of snapping this. If you guys are having trouble with this, one, two, one. One, yes, two. Right there, on the and the two. One, two, and. One, two, and. One, two, and. One, two. second string, that G, which is a third of the chord. He's actually really just stacking this triad. He's got the G, he's got the fifth, the B, and the third. Do you guys get that? Isn't that sweet? He's targeting chord tones. I always talk about these triad embellishments, and that's really what he's doing, creating this really sweet melody. Um, with some mo rhythmic motifs and also melodic motifs, both. Very compositional. Okay, so we have this again. We have one. Okay, and there you could use your, but I don't. You could use whatever fingering feels comfortable. I'm doing my third finger to arrive on this G. Because the next lick is on the and of two. And you're gonna definitely wanna get your first finger here. One. Okay, so imagine this. One, well, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. This is the intro, of course. Get ready. 
right here. One. Okay. And we're going to do that a few times. I might get my talking metronome out here. If you guys want to just keep practicing. Pro metronome? Get pro metronome. It's free and it's great. And it talks to you. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, or four, four. It really, really helps when you're trying to get your timing, your phrasing correct and accurate to know where you're at. Because you can cheat and you might not even know you're cheating. So definitely use the talking metronome. I know it sounds cheesy to use a talking metronome, but I like it. I, I like it and I work with my students when we're working on transcriptions. And it really helps. That's pretty good. Three, of your own home so you can keep working on whatever little section that you want to. I'm just going to keep looping this a few times. I might take out that intro, but I'm going to add the intro in just for now in case you want to give it a try. One, two, three. compositional techniques here, improvisational ideas, motifs that you can extract from the solo. I'm going to point those out because they're really pretty and I think it's very important to, to, to know that and understand it. And also if you're jamming with somebody live in a band, you can instantly harmonize. So like if this is on the third, you can go to the fifth and harmonize, you know, to the next note of the chord tone. And that's a great way to create harmonies and new licks from just one idea. So again, this is one, two, two, three. I'm adding a little dose of vibrato. You know, you want to add some, some life into these notes. I like to slide into it. Maybe I'll attack it harder. You know, don't just be very polite about it. Really dig in there. So notice my fingering. No matter what finger I chose for that G, I'm still going to use my index finger for the D sharp. And it's almost like a little chromatic exercise. So you might use your pinky. You might use whatever finger you're using. But then you're going to probably shift to the D sharp with your first finger. So again, that would be this. One, two. So again, that would be this. One, two, two, three. One, two, and three, and two, three. Two, three. One, two, three, one. 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 Two
okay, good. Work. I think you guys all got it. You know, again, I think I'm talking a lot about working out your fingerings. I think we want to get it so it's just automatic, ideally. So it's good to plan out your fingerings ahead of time. But um, again, sometimes you just got to do what you need to do. I mean, I could demonstrate it just using all with one finger, but in context. <laughs> trying to figure out what fingering works best so I can actually execute it. Or I might play here. Mm. I like it here, it's brighter. I mean, when you watch him on the live video, he's playing it here. Mm. Uh, so again, I'm just saying work out your fingering. We're, we're gonna take it about 80 and try to just keep adding to it. But, you know, again, you'll also get the timing, the phrasing, very, very important. As a matter of fact, the next phrase is just like the first phrase, but an octave higher, one. Okay? One. So we did this, one. Now I'm going like this, one. Different fingering. Again, you know, you might say, ooh, I like it better here. I'm, I'm just experimenting with different fingerings. But again, I think it lays really well here, one. One. So notice how I'm counting, I'm not really saying one, two, three, but I'm going one, two, three, one. Okay. Uh, but I, I'm sorry, I, I was faster than, I was definitely faster than 80. One, two, three. One, two. Three. Notice I'm one, ending on my first two, finger here. Three. Okay. One, one two, two, three, three one. Back 
backtrack to 13, three, we'll get that much two, down. Three, 13, 14, one, and 15. Two, three. Copy me, and I want to make sure I'm teaching you correctly. But the uh, re the issue. Oh, sorry, Tony. Uh, the um the you know the thing the issue of fingerings are always going to come up. You know, Leslie and I say, well, I don't like using my pinky. You know, a lot of jitsu jazz players don't like using their pinky. So you might have to figure out um what what fingering works best for you. Same as picking too. You know, uh, I have kind of have my own approach to it, and it's not the gypsy picking. So. Um, if you're expecting that, I'm not really doing that. I am focusing a lot on rest strokes, however. Um, this. So where, where I'm picking and I'm resting the pick on the string underneath it. I'm just, the only thing that I'm not really observing is downstroke on each new string. And so I think a good place to practice is this. decided to pick the 10 but actually that's should not that's not what's written it should be versus this I don't know if you guys can hear the difference but the the last or this that's actually an eighth note and two sixteenth notes dalia da dalia da it's actually long short short long versus even triplets Versus, you guys hear the rhythmic difference? Pretty subtle variation, you know, but it is it is different, just so you know. I think a good place to just practice right now is this. Um, so I went. I, let me get the timing of that phrase. Yeah, I did it differently. So again, my recommendation is practice this because you got you got to hear right. You went um, and then we have to get this. And I and I uh, 
Uh, and I think just, you know, again, repetition. That's why you guys have, you can mute me if you want to. I'm just gonna be repeating it anyways. But if you're like, wait, wait, I gotta get this. Let's see. You know, slowly, slowly get it down. I mean, again, I really want you guys to get it accurately and learn it correctly this time around if you've attempted to play it before. And this way it will stick. But also it really helps to know the theory behind it. Some of these licks, how he's embellishing around the E minor. And then to the B7, the fifth, and this beautiful lick. Right, these arpeggio, these chord tones being, um, you know, just pl he's playing around with the rhythm of it, but he's really targeting so nicely the third. Flat nine. That's flat seven to the fifth. That's the third, this is the next phrase, so we should talk about this on the B7 chord, the five chord. It's actually very simple, the harmony. So far, we have not left the one chord. It's been all E minor. This, um, that's a five. And then now we're on the five chord. Boom, chuck, chuck, boom. And now he does this. And that note, if you're wondering, is not a chord tone. Well, it kind of is. It's a flat nine. B7, flat nine. But I'm playing it here. So if you want to take a look at the next phrase on the B7 chord, please go ahead. And notice that syncopation, one and two and three and bada bit. It's a nice little trick to take three notes and not play them as triplets. It's not this. It's not da 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 da. It's it's. And again, right hand can kind of dig in there. Practice that right hand. on it if you want to be more precise. And then here's, and by the way, that's on the B7, right on the third to the fifth. Like you're in the scale, actually it'd be the harmonic minor scale, E harmonic minor. Which will, again, we'll, we'll analyze a little bit further, but right now B7. And then go now to the A, which is a flat seven. See, you see it right here in the B seven chord. And that was flat seven, root, flat nine to the fifth. So we have root, I'm sorry, we have the flat seven, root, flat nine, repeat, to the fifth. Actually, really cool licks that you can steal. <laughs> well, we can borrow them, rather. You know, again, these are great lines uh, where you're out targeting chord tones, connecting them. But again, what we want to do is this two, three. Helps to memorize it by knowing the theory. I'm on the five chord. See the bar chord here? You can even think this. B7. I'm on the third. Flat nine. To the flat seven. To the fifth. Okay. Do you guys see that? From the B chord. You got the B, you got the fifth, you got the flat seven, you got the flat nine, you got the third, you got the fifth again. Just like we're doing a diminished arpeggio. Okay, so again, that's the theory here. That boom, chuck, chuck. Two, three. Two, three. Don't forget, where did we just come from? We came from here. One, two. 
two, three. Two, three. Two, three. And then we gotta finish out that cool arpeggio there. Uh, how you guys doing? I'm, I'm wanting this to be very, quote, interactive, but I want you to really try this on the spot. You'll know, you might say, oh, I gotta work on that one later or, or more. You know, don't and don't wear yourself out too, of course, even though I want you to play. I really think this is good. Again, it, it takes takes patience, you know, I think just to go through it, but this is the this is how you learn it really well, by doing it over and over. It's and you know, as much as I like just kind of demonstrating, you know, play a harmonic minor, play diminished you gotta do it. This is this is what this workshop is in particular is about, is actually digging in and doing the work. Um, and everybody's at a different level, I do understand that. Maybe some of you have already done this before. So in that case, what I'm suggesting is, hey, harmonize with me. Try to play out, you know, that's why I'm kind of giving you the theory. Meaning this, if I'm doing this, you could do this. You could do this. You know, you could play off the third, the fifth, the flat nine. You can think about where, where else can I play this if you've already got it. You could be making your own version so that you're really learning how to use these ideas. Um, we have to backtrack, we have to go here. Two, three. Okay, I just don't want to overlook that much before we finish out this section. Um, so let's try it again with the metronome that far. And I do want to say be careful when you do this lick. Um, one, two, three. You actually have to count that one, two, three, because that you might get off. <laughs> so when you do this lick and you land here, one, two, three. Two, three. I'm not I didn't count the one, two, three, but you'll we'll have our friendly metronome count that for us. But I really suggest going. kind of one, slow now, but two, that's okay. Three, um, one, two, where three, do I want to start? One, right here. Two, right here. Three, relatively three, slow from the demonstrations one, two, here, but let's three, get it and make sure one, you swing two, it. Three, okay, just one, lay back. Two, da, da, three, da, 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 one, da, 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 two. two. Okay, one, here we go. Two, three, one, Where are we starting? Two, right here. Okay, just showing you where we're three, starting. One, here we go. Two, three,
touch my right hand, just kind of digging in there, and I'm resting on the string underneath it. And then I'm picking that as an upstroke. And then I'm adding on the triad, 3-5. And I'm hitting that with a downstroke and then an upstroke, D sharp, F sharp. And if I wanted it more bright sounding, I'd get back to my bridge. But right now for demonstration, just to show you. You know, this, you can even do it with your thumb. <laughs> if you want, but. Okay, so again. This depends on what flavor you want. And that's just a B7 arpeggio. Well, the flat nine here. So we have the root, fifth, or sorry, root, third, fifth, flat seven, and then the root. Try Bernard, you too. I can't see Bernard if you're really if you're practicing. Cause I don't see your guitar. <laughs> All I see is your face. I. Oh, he does have a guitar. Good. Well, no, that's good. You know, some people are looking at their fretboard. It, it's good just to kind of. Again, you know, a lot of this is there's a lot of good technical stuff out of that we can extract from this. These little dominant arpeggios. 